What's up guys, welcome back. Now this might come as a surprise to some of you, but I'm not Jamaican. However, I'm gonna do my best to do this recipe justice. Today I'm gonna show you how to make oxtail. Honestly, this is one of the most highly requested recipes I've had on this channel, and today I'm gonna show you how to make it quick and easy using the pressure cooker. But first, let's go over these ingredients. First things first, you gotta have some oxtail. You might gotta take out a loan to get these these days. I got these for about $11.99 a pound. Quick pro tip, if you go to your local international market, you can find them a little bit cheaper and they're usually trimmed up nice like these. We've got this new product from Walker's Wood, which is green seasoning. You can obviously make your own from scratch at home, but this stuff is really good. Got a little jerk seasoning, some fresh garlic, our oxtail seasoning. You can use whatever brand you like. We got some ginger paste. For the veggies, we got carrots and onion, plus a little green onion a little scotch bonnet pepper or habanero to bring the spice to the party. We got some fresh thyme, a little browning, and some soy sauce. All right, my friends, the first thing we need to do is get our marinade going. For that, we're gonna need our veggies. Again, we, we have our jarred green seasoning, but you can make that from scratch as well. But today, we're gonna go ahead and add a little something extra to it, some more fresh veggies never hurt. So we're gonna add all of this to our mixing bowl or our measuring cup, along with some liquid, and try to blend it all up. To that, we're gonna add some soy sauce, about a quarter cup or so of low sodium soy sauce. Then we're gonna add our beef broth to this as well. That's gonna act as our marinade and our braising liquid, really. Now traditionally, oxtail is cleaned with a combination of lime juice or vinegar, or a little bit of both. Uh, you can run some cold water over them. The key here though, guys, is to make sure that you get any bone fragments out of there because they are processed um, and you don't want to have anything in there that's going to damage your teeth. So now we're going to season this up, a little jerk seasoning, which is optional, but I like the flavor. It's going to add a little spice as well. Not really making jerk oxtail, but I like the seasoning in mine. And then some oxtail seasoning. I'm gonna hit with a little all-purpose seasoning as well. A little salt and pepper would work in place of that. About a tablespoon of this green seasoning. About a tablespoon of ginger paste. A good teaspoon or two, depending on how dark you want your gravy to be, of this browning liquid. You can add a little bit more later. Keep in mind, guys, once it's in there, you can't take it out, but you can always add a little bit more later if you need to. Then we're just gonna get in there with our hands and just make sure that the oxtail is adequately coated. And then we're gonna pour our marinade over the top and let that roll for about four hours or so in the fridge, maybe even overnight if you need to. But as you can see, the oxtail looks great, perfectly seasoned, got some good color from the browning. Then we're gonna add some of our marinade Got all those fresh veggie flavors in there along with the, the green seasoning we used. And just let that hang out in the fridge for a little bit. Now for one of the most important parts of the recipe, you wanna sear the oxtail. We went ahead and knocked off a little bit of the excess marinade. And we're gonna get it in a smoking hot skillet and start to develop some color. All right, so we're looking for a nice golden brown color on our oxtail. Got some good char going on some of these. You just wanna sear all sides, make sure they get nice and golden brown. They're going in the pressure cooker. All right, so the key to this recipe is searing the meat. You wanna make sure you get a nice color on there. You wanna develop some crust that's gonna add texture, color, and flavor. And that's why it's so important to sear before you braise or put it in the Instapot pressure cooker, whatever you're using. All right, so I'm gonna add a touch more browning, like a half teaspoon or so. 
then we're gonna add another quarter cup of soy sauce. We're gonna add some of that marinade. Just for additional flavor. Plenty of good stuff in there. Next, I'm going in with some ground allspice. Very traditional flavor when it comes to Caribbean cuisine. It's basically a pimento berry that's ground down. Very fragrant, great flavor. We're doing this in the pressure cooker today. And in my opinion, you, you lose a little bit of flavor when you use the pressure cooker versus the stove top. So we're gonna inject a little bit of additional flavor by adding some beef bouillon powder or some beef base. Something that's gonna really elevate the flavor a little bit more. And then of course we're gonna use my all-purpose seasoning or just a little salt and pepper. Last but not least, we're gonna add the beef stock to allow these to cook nicely. So we're gonna get that in there. You don't wanna boil these, you just wanna bring it up to about right there where the oxtails mostly submerged but the shoulders are still sticking out so to speak. We're gonna pop that in the pressure cooker for 55 minutes on high pressure. You should have some fall off the bone tender oxtail. The last two things going in is the thyme and one more scotch bonnet because why the hell not? We're here for a good time, not a long time. And I'll see you in 55 minutes. All right guys, so the oxtail just came out of the Instapot with a pressure cooker. We're gonna set that aside and make our gravy. First thing you wanna do is strain the liquid. So we got our mesh strainer here. We're gonna pour this right into a bowl. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make a nice gravy by making a slurry. We just want all that flavorful liquid in there without all the herbs and whatnot. So this is a good method to do that. Just strain it through a mesh strainer. You can take a spoon and kind of help the rest of it get through there. You can press some of that garlic and different herbs. Anything that's fine enough to go through the mesh strainer is fine enough to be in our gravy. Tons of flavor in that though, guys. If you want to save that for another dish, suit yourself. I wouldn't be mad at that. But right now we're making gravy. So we need the liquid. We can strain off the fat off the top, optionally. All right, so for the gravy, I'm gonna add just about a quarter teaspoon of browning because we're adding a slurry, which is a mixture of cornstarch and water. We don't want our gravy to get too light in color. So in goes the slurry. Bring it to a boil. And you'll notice that it'll thicken up pretty quickly for you. Now immediately, you see that it's thickened up, you got a gravy-like consistency. You can make it as dark as you want by adding a little bit more browning. I think that's a pretty good color right there. Just so wanna leave it just like that. If you end up making it a little too thick, just add a little beef broth and it'll thin it right back out. All right guys, so that's how our oxtail is looking. Absolutely fall off the bone tender. We got a delicious gravy. Can't forget the gravy, baby. Don't go light with this stuff, guys. Serve this up with some rice, rice and peas, cabbage, mashed potatoes, whatever you want, man. You can't go wrong. But the gravy is definitely setting this off. This is the part where I say, brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me, guys, looking good. The only thing left to do is dig in here for a taste test, but before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. Moment of truth, guys, it doesn't get more tender than this. Oh man, look at that. 